Well, thank you for being here this afternoon. I know it means the world to Margie and the kids and the rest of the family, and what a blessing it is to have so many friends and family. People have traveled in from out of state. We're grateful for them, and um, just grateful that we could all be together to honor the life of an incredible man, a good man that uh, we all love dearly. Um, Jim loved long sermons. No, he really didn't. He didn't. But I I do want to share with you briefly about Joe's life and a bit of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. I want to start by sharing with you a story from the book of John in the Bible, John chapter 14. This is after the resurrection. The apostles had spent 40 days with Jesus. Uh, But his time on earth was coming to a close. He was getting ready to, to go back to heaven. And with words of hope, Jesus reminds his disciples that there's a a better time than now, a place better than earth, and a person more important than any other. This is from John chapter 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I'm going. One of his disciples, Thomas, said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Let's pray. Well, Father God, as we come to you, We're grateful that we can through Jesus Christ, grateful for the hope that we have of eternity and the opportunity, Lord, that today we have to honor Jim McGuire and celebrate his life. We are thankful for him, and Father, we give you thanks for the time we could spend on earth with him. We're thankful for his family, and we pray your blessing and comfort on them, God. And for all of his friends, those that were so close to him over the years, we're grateful for them and pray your blessing of comfort on them as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, in our culture, we use the word love in uh, many, many different ways. We love everything from food and family to movies and music. And there's many things that Jim loved in life. The most important ones are sitting here with us today. But there's some things that Jim loved, like chips and Diet Pepsi. He loved his cell phone and the many Snapchat filters he found there. I don't know that he loved his job, but he certainly was faithful for many years to his employers at Diamond Innovations. I'm sure he would have loved one last trip to Florida. He loved horse racing, hunting grouse in Michigan, and fishing at the cabin in Canada. He loved the outdoors. He loved farming with Ernie. Jim loved his dog, Bo. They did everything together, by the way. They farmed together, and they even flipped trucks together. But there's nothing that Jim loved more than his family. Joe and Steph, Shane and Rachel, Jody and Chuck and all of your kids, he loved you deeply, loves you so much. And Margie, he loved you, certainly. 46 years as husband and wife. From those trips to Pennsylvania to visit you when you were dating, to raising a family, working toward retirement together, facing a debilitating disease. Those times alone, these last few months in the hospital, you shared a deep love and an incredible devotion to one another. Margie, you have modeled for your children, your grandchildren, and for all of us what love looks like. Thank you. When Jimmy and Margie were looking to find their dream house as retirement was nearing for both of them, Jim's best friend Ernie told them about a cabin on a farm near Danville that would be ideal. It was owned by preacher Gene and his wife Carolyn. They soon developed a a close friendship, and Gene encouraged them to attend the church here at Millwood, where I had started preaching. I never intended to, but from what I understand, most weeks I would push what I'll call 
Jimmy's Bible buttons. I would say something in a sermon that maybe Jim hadn't heard before or didn't understand how it was being presented. And he would get mad and he would leave convinced he'd never come back. And then he'd go talk to his buddy, Gene. And Gene would show him what the Bible said on the subject. And to his credit, that would settle the matter for Jim, what the Bible said on the subject. So he'd come back to church the next week, and unintentionally I would push Jim's Bible buttons again. And week after week, he would go home, and Gene had the opportunity to, to teach Jim and Marge the Bible. And on October 4th, 2007, in the pond in front of their house, Jim and Margie were immersed into Christ for the remission of their sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they've been a faithful and important part of the Lord's church ever since. In all the years I knew Jim, there was no pretense with him. He was never impressed with big words, didn't like new ideas. Like many of the Amish that he befriended over the years, he was just a simple, hardworking man. He was a husband, a dad, a friend, a coach, a farmer, at least he tried to be. In the end, Jim was what matters most for eternity, though. He was just a Christian. Jim loves his Lord. He lived with a greater hope than he could have ever had of breathing well again. He lived with a greater hope than being healed from his transplant. I think his hope of going to heaven was even greater than his hope of going back home. And for a number of months, it was a ventilator that sustained Jim. Today, though, there are no machines, Margie, no more IV. The ventilator, Jim doesn't need it. And though that staff at Ohio State was pretty incredible for six months, the only doctors and nurses with Jim today are those that preceded him into eternity and the great physician himself, his Lord Jesus. Jim is healed and breathing just fine right now. On February 10th, when Jim's heart beat for that final time, his hope was realized. Jesus had been waiting for Jim. Jim was a special man, but he loved a special Lord who saved him from his sins and ushered him into heaven on the day that he died. And for that, we can celebrate today. Though there's much sorrow and sadness because we will miss a great man, we should celebrate because he suffers no more. I want to give you the opportunity if anybody's here today and you'd like to share any stories of your time with Jim I'm sure there's some funny ones out there you're more than welcome to stand where you are uh, just project your voice or you're welcome to come on the stage and share that with us I'll give you a few minutes to do so if you'd like Well, that's good. I know there's lots of memories in your minds and in your hearts that you'll be able to carry from this place and allow them to be a strong comfort for you. You know, a, a day like this is difficult, and the family has really gone through a difficult six months through this whole process. Losing a, a friend, a father, a husband is hard. There is, though, a better time than now. There is a better place than here, and there is a person more important than any other, and that's Jesus. And my hope is that when our time comes, whenever it comes, that we're ready to meet him. Jesus said, the one who believes and is baptized will be saved. The one who believes not will be condemned. So I would encourage you today, just a simple request, make sure you're ready. Jim was for a long time. He was ready. He knew that when he went into this whole procedure in Columbus, he was ready. And I want you to know that when you are ready, you can have that same hope of being with Jesus that Jim had. And so in honor of Jim, 
keeping this sermon relatively short, let me close by reading a passage of scripture with you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep or who have passed away, so that you will not grieve as the rest do without any hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have died before in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have passed away. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. There is a great comfort in knowing that regardless of what this life brings, the pain that we might experience, the health issues that we might have, there is great hope in knowing that eternity awaits when we're with Christ. Let's pray. Our God in heaven, as we come to you again, we do give you thanks for knowing that Jesus Christ has made the way clear for us. Father, I thank you for each one that's gathered here, and I pray that all of us will take an account today, before it is tomorrow, that today, Lord, we will understand our position with you, knowing, God, for certain that we are ready if Christ should return or you should take us away. And, Father, if we're not, any person here, Father, may they take the steps needed to be sure that they can be with Jesus in heaven. God, we're thankful for Jim and the example that he set throughout his life of being such a hard worker, a diligent man who loved his family and served his community. And Father, we pray for Margie. Father, we ask that you'll be her hand of strength and comfort, that you'll be with each of Jim's kids and, and his um, grandkids, Lord, that you'll be with them and strengthen them through this. And Father, that through it all, we'll celebrate the work of Jesus Christ in the life of a good man named Jim McGuire. So God, we give you honor and praise. For the sake of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, again, we're glad that you were here today. If you didn't have the opportunity to speak with Margie or any of the family, you're welcome to step up toward the front before you depart, but otherwise, you're dismissed. Thanks for being here.